We thank you for viewing in today at the Touching Hearts Ministry Church. We have a rainy day outside, but we have sunshine in our church today because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here today. And He promised that we're two or three or four or five or ten or a hundred are gathered together, that He would send His Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us. And those that are viewing in today, no matter what you're viewing, our website or DVDs or wherever you may be viewing this program on, we want to let you know, as we do every Sabbath, that the Son of God is intensely in love with you. And His desire is that you will spend eternity with Him regardless of, of your past we're so glad that you tuned in today we have a brand new sermon hot off the press today it's called searching for a hero and before i pray i want to read this scripture to you searching for a hero and you will find that in james the fourth chapter verses 8 through 10 i want you to get your pencil and pads out write these scriptures down and study to show yourselves approved and here's what the bible says Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. That's a promise. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And verse 9 says, Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Verse 10, listen, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and praise God. Amber, he shall lift you up. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to preach the love of God before you come. The second coming of God is just a breath away. So, Lord, bless this service with thy spirit. And if there's someone that's viewing in today that don't know who you are, Send your spirit to talk to their hearts today and may they find out your grace and love today before this service is over. So, Father, guide me and direct me. Give me the words to speak today that I can uplift the lovely name of Christ. Thank you, Father, for calling me into the ministry. In Christ's name, amen. So, as Brenda read right before we came on the air today, we're talking about searching for a hero and I'm going to read that verse to you one more time because you need to think about what this verse is saying. Draw nigh to God. That means get close to God and praise God. If you take the effort to get close to Him, the Bible says He will draw nigh unto you. And it says, cleanse your hands. Be washed in the blood of Christ. Now, searching for a hero. Let me read you a little bit. Whilst <laughs> I got up early this morning about 4.30 or 5.00. And I thought about what is a hero before we get into the message. Listen carefully. What is a hero, Carolyn? It's a man or a woman who is famous for his or her courage or ability and are admired for their brave deeds and noble qualities. That's what a hero is. Now, any person who is brought, <laughs> who is thought as a model. Someone to follow, such as an athlete, could be a hero, Gary. Uh, a movie actor, to some, is a hero. A politician, or a person in any form of duty or occupation, such as a police officer, could be thought of as a hero. We all, at one time or another, we've had a hero, have we? Now, as I was growing up, I know up to the age of about 15, Bob, <laughs> My hero was my dad. I thought dad could outrun everybody. He was stronger than everybody. And as you're young, you think about beating people up. I thought he could just beat anybody up. We don't want to do that. Those are viewing in, by the way. But you, this is a child's thought. I thought my dad could do anything. Until one day, I opened a comic book. And I read about a guy called Superman. <laughs> All of a sudden, dad went from hero to zero. And I had a brand new hero. And when I first read that, I thought, my, this guy can fly. He can jump buildings in a single bound. Are you with me? He's stronger than a locomotive and faster than a speeding bullet. I thought, this is just incredible. And as I first read that at a young age, as far as I knew, there was a Superman out there. And he was my hero. 
And that's the way life is, folks. Today you might be somebody's hero. Tomorrow you might be just zero. <laughs> but the world today, in the chaos that we're in, and the perplexities that this world faces, we are looking for a hero. And if we can't find one, we'll manufacture one. We'll fictionalize a hero. It may be Batman or Superman, but we will come up with somebody that's going to save this planet. There's only one hero. That's Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody give me an amen on it. Now, let's go a bit further here. Now, it says in James there, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaven is what it's saying there. We go through life a giggling and a laughing like we're going to be here forever. It's time that we come to our senses and be washed in the blood of Christ because our hero is about to come and get his people. And everybody said, Amen. Now, draw nigh to God. Brother Donnie, what does that mean, draw nigh to God? God expects for us to seek Him and to look for Him. Here's what it says in 2 Chronicles 15.2. Write that down, those that are viewing in. And Doris, I know Doris. I don't have to say Doris is writing it down right now. 2 Chronicles 15.2. Here's what the Bible says. The Lord, <laughs> listen, the Lord is with you while you are with Him. If you seek Him, He will be found with you. <laughs> Here's what it says in Psalms 145, 18, Robbie. The Lord is near to all that call upon Him. To all that call upon Him in truth. That tells me no matter how far in sin you've gotten, if you call upon God, He will be there. If you're into prostitution, if you're in a drug ring, if you're an alcoholic, if you're a wife beater, if you turn to God, God will turn and He will come to you and wash you clean if you'll accept Him as your personal Savior. And everybody said, Amen. This is what it says in Luke 15, 20. This is a touching scenario. Listen very carefully. Even while the prodigal son was a far way off, the father, listen, ran to his son. And he hugged him, and he kissed him, and he welcomed him home out of a great love for his son. The son was seeking the father. He didn't even get to the father's porch. The father saw him way down that path, and the father ran to him to let him know, I forgive you, even before the son got to the porch. Come on, somebody give me an amen. God wants to forgive you, and if he sees, Gala, you working your way toward Him, praise God, He runs to you out of an incredible, great love. Those that are viewing it today, the prodigal son had left home. He had taken all of his inheritance and taken it out into the world. And yet, even though he left the home, the father sat on that porch every day looking down that road, waiting for that figure that he knew so well. He knew the gait. He knew the movements. He could see that that his son was coming toward him, and out of an incredible grace and mercy and compassion, the father ran to him first. Come on, somebody. Help me. Now that is my hero. <laughs> That's the father. That's my hero. Now listen. Let's go a bit further. The son had discovered there were no heroes out in the world. He had discovered that. He found out that nobody could save him that could relieve that feeling of guilt that could calm the fears of what tomorrow might be in store for him. But his hero and the world's hero of hope was patiently waiting for him. Listen, constantly looking down that path that led to the pearly gates or home, and he never lost track of his son. We find today, we, there may become a time, here's what the Chinese say, Kathy, that a man doesn't open his eyes till he's 30. We don't know anything. To about, and we open our eyes and say, what's going on around here? What's going on? We finally came to our senses. The prodigal son came to his senses and said, I need a Savior. I need a hero. I want to go back home. Those that are viewing in, Jesus Christ is your Savior. He's your hero. He is looking for you. He has been seeking for you. And now if you'll make the effort to come to him, he will run to you. Now that's the hero. I'm the only one that's excited today. And I'm going to go on. Now listen. 
Robbie, in our world today, we read of heroes. A police officer, a fireman, maybe a hero in the armed forces that protect America. All who risk their lives every day, but though they may save your life, they cannot save your soul. Come on. We do have heroes out there. Any police officer that's on the state highways or on the byways or on the country roads, to me, they are a hero every day. They risk their lives for me every day. And they might be able to save me physically, but there's only one that can save me eternally. Come on, somebody. Give them an amen. Now, here's what the Bible goes on to say. Purify your heart, ye double-minded. Well, what is double-minded? We find that in verse 8. It is a person who is tossed with every wind of doctrine, who has many heroes on many different days. He has no loyalties. Anything, anyone can be his hero at any given time. Those kind of double-minded folks never get attached to anyone at any time. Is everybody with me so far? Now listen, throughout America's history, there have been many heroes, but even though they may have made the headlines, maybe they were in every conversation across this great land. The heroes of the past are all gone. They have passed away. They were mortal. And as time ticked away, so did their lives here on this earth. But on the other hand, the true hero will never, ever pass away. He does not grow weary. His eyes are always focused on his people, for he is still looking down that path waiting for you <laughs> he never gets tired there had been many heroes in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s but you know what happened they got old and they passed on for instance my grandbabies now as of now because gary they're young three four five six seven to some of my grandbabies i'm their hero i'm the one that gives them chocolate candy I take them to school. I pick them up. I carry them. Even in the first grade, I carry them to the, high, to the door of the school. I am their hero. But I got news for you. This hero was over at his son Donnie's the other night. And we had a great time over there. He has five children. They're my grandbabies. And they decided after the birthday party, they wanted Poppy to race them in 50-yard dashes. Yeah. I'm out there, 65 years old, running 50-yard dash sprints. And I'm a running, and I'm a going at it. And I get up the next morning, I said, hey, I feel great. I feel great. The next morning I got up, all my joints were locked. I could raise my arm and do this, and I'd go, ow. Every muscle was sore. I, could too, I couldn't even turn over in the bed. The hero had gotten old. <laughs> we need to rely on somebody that doesn't get old, that never grows weary, that never gets tired. Listen to this. Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the everlasting Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he never gets weary. <laughs> he doesn't get stiff. He's always focused. Let's go a little bit further. Batman sleeps, Amber. You may not know that. Captain America sleeps. And when exposed to kryptonite, I found out Superman gets weak and tired. Come on, somebody help me. If we cannot find a hero, we fictionalize here in America. We make up, we dream up a hero that will save our planet and protect us from the evil forces. Man is limited. He is limited mentally and physically. His capabilities cannot save this world, but with God, nothing is impossible. <laughs> nothing is impossible. Here's what it says in Mark 10, 27. Write these down. But Jesus looked at them Jesus, <laughs> my hero, 
He looked at them and he said, with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, what does the Bible says? All things are possible. Amen. <laughs> Man, I'm having a great time today. <laughs> Here's what the Bible goes on to say in James. Be afflicted. Well, why does God want me afflicted if he loves me? Listen, we need to wake up out of our spiritual deafness, our spiritual deadness, and realize that we are in a desperate need of a hero. We need to look at ourselves, and if we do, we will see that sin is written all over us. Whew. It's all over us. If you'll stop for just a minute and look at yourself through somebody else's eyes, they'll say, he's got problems. Donnie's got issues. We have sin written all over us, and the only way to get that erased or purged is with the blood of Christ. And everybody said, amen. So as those that are viewing in today, Donnie, I've been into drugs. I've been into alcohol. I've been into pornography. Am I too dirty for the blood of Christ? Oh, if one drop of blood can cleanse the world, it can certainly cleanse you. And everybody said, amen. Let's go for now. It says to mourn. Why should I mourn? I got enough mourning going on as it is. Those, now, if you don't get anything else today, Gary, get this. Those that believe that Christianity and that the plan of salvation, that there is a God and that there is a spirit and they are a joke to them, I got news for you. If you think that the plan of salvation is a joke, the joke's on you. Are you with what I just said? I just talked to one, a little boy the other day. He's five years old. I was talking about Jesus. He said, I don't believe in Jesus. I said, you don't know. I said, what about God? I don't believe in God. Why don't you believe in God? He said, because my mom says there is no God. If you train that child, that's where he's going to end up, folks. Right now, that baby needs somebody to be a hero that will bring Jesus Christ into his life rather than say that there is no God. Those that say that there is no God, the joke is on them when Christ comes. The devil has hoodwinked them into believing there's no God, there is no Savior, there's no plan of salvation. But through Jesus Christ, I, I've been praying for that little fella. I've been praying, oh God, Give that boy something to say to wake his mom up. Is anybody with me so far? Now, let's go a bit further. Listen, it is just amazing to me, Darren. <laughs> Teaching our children that there is a Santa Claus. And oh, how the children look for him in the Christmas season. And that there's a rabbit. That he delivers candy. Think about what we've come up with today. This rabbit. A busy little rabbit. He delivers candy and goodies during the Easter celebration. And the children are searching for candy eggs that this rabbit supposedly has strategically placed. He has hidden these eggs and bidding that the children come and seek these golden nuggets of tasteful pleasure. It is just amazing that this woman said there's no God, and yet she teaches her son that there's a Santa Claus and that there's a rabbit that delivers eggs. Oh, come on, somebody. What is this world coming to? Let's break that down. In the eyes of children, Santa and the rabbit in the Christmas season, in the Easter season, that's their heroes. That's all they talk about. We have a grandson. He lost a tooth. I got to put this underneath the pillow. Mom said there's a tooth fairy that will come and give me $5. He went on to say, pull them all. Pull them all. He said, I'll have over $100. They put this tooth, believing that this little fairy is going to fly in during the night and some come up with 5 bucks. Why not 10 and he gives it to the child. Are you with me? Lord have mercy. Now, in the eyes of the children, Santa and the rabbit are their heroes. It teaches, it trains our children for true happiness. Now, here's what you're teaching them today. Those that are viewing in. You're training your children that for true happiness and pleasure, seek ye first the things of the world. That's what you're doing. Listen, 
We're teaching them to look for a hero out there in the world, whether it be Superman, Batman, Matt Dillon, or the Six Million Dollar Man. You will only find in the eyes of a true hero on this earth, we have none. We have none. There are no heroes here that can save your soul, that can relieve the guilt, that can help you through another day. Our mother passed away six weeks ago. It's all I can do to get through the day without thinking about mom 23 hours a day. Come on, somebody help me. I need somebody to help me get my mind back on track. A fireman would like to. A policeman would like to help me. He cannot help me mentally or spiritually. Come on, somebody help me. Or emotionally. Let's go a bit further. Our world, this earth, is a planet <laughs> in peril. It is as if the earth is gasping for breath. It's as if the earth is fighting for survival. Yet, the prognosis is grim because the diagnosis is sin. Do you hear what I just said? I sound like Muhammad Ali. That the prognosis is grim because the diagnosis is sin. Come on, somebody. Listen what the Bible says. Peter 3, 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store by the power of God reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But listen carefully. Verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord, it will come. It will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens that we're looking up into at night, folks, will be burned and pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are in it shall be burned up. We fight. And we struggle to live this life as if it is an eternal life. The Bible says it's all going to be burned up anyway. <laughs> you can take all those Mercedes Benz and all that gold rings and all that money to the grave with you. It's going to be burned up. Amen. All right, I'm going to go on anyway. Now listen, the Bible clearly states that the prognosis for this world, that there is no hope. <laughs> <laughs> what is a prognosis? I had a, a perfect a, a prognosis before I go any further. We're going to get a little technical here today. Little medical stuff didn't hurt you any, did it? Listen. Prognosis. A forecasting of a probable course and outcome of a disease. A prediction of the chances of recovery. The prognosis if for the earth is it's going to burn up. It's gone. And we found out that the diagnosis, the problem with this today, is sin. And the Bible clearly states that the prognosis for this world, that there is no hope for a full recovery. And only a few will survive. <laughs> this planet, in a short period of time, will be burned up and it will be gone forever. What's the diagnosis? An analysis of the cause of... Or the nature of a problem. You know why we're sick? Sin. We're physically sick. We're spiritually sick. We're mentally sick. We're emotionally because of sin itself. That's the diagnosis. And sin causes death. Romans 6.23, for the wage of sin is what? Death. Let's go a bit further. Now, whatever physical ailment, there's a cause. Maybe it's a virus. Maybe it's a bacteria. Or maybe a normal cell mutates into an abnormal cell which turns into cancer. Whatever the disease, there's a cause. Now listen carefully. The prognosis of this world written by the hand of the great physician writes that the end of all things is at hand and that the cause of death of this world is sin. But we have an antidote. Oh, come on, somebody help me. We've got an antidote. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Eternal life through Jesus Christ, my hero. Listen, Isaiah 59, 1 through 3. This is what the Bible says. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, <laughs> nor his ear heavy 
that he cannot hear. That's the problem I have. Somebody will say something, I'll say, what? And they say, you can't hear. I say, oh, I can hear perfectly. Really? Listen. But your sins, your iniquities have separated you from God. You hear what I just said? And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has uttered perversity. But there is a cure. Come on, somebody. Second Chronicles 7, 22. Listen to what the Bible says. Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, he brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they embraced other gods. They embraced other heroes, and they worshiped these heroes, and they worshiped these gods, and they served them. Therefore, calamity will come down on this world because we have embraced other gods. And why do we do that? There aren't any other gods but God. <laughs> but we do it. Listen, because, now listen, because of sin, the diagnosis, because of worship of man-made heroes that cannot save the soul, they cannot wash away the diagnosis called sin. The calamities of the last days will fall, and eventually all who profess Christ or deny Christ will fall to their knees in worship of the true hero. Those that are viewing in, and you can deny Christ all you want, but when Christ comes in the second coming, you're going to hit your knees. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the hero. Come on, somebody. Jesus Christ is the hero. You can deny him. You can hate him. You can despise him. You can be an atheist, but it's not going to stop the second coming. Woo! Oh, I shouted. I did it. I knew that was going to happen. Listen. Psalms 86, 8 through 10. Among the man-made gods, the man-made heroes, there is none like unto thee, O God. Neither are there any works unto like thy works. All nations whom thou hast made, every nation and every tongue shall come and worship before thee. O Lord, they shall glorify thy name, for thou art great. <laughs> thou doest wondrous things, because thou art God alone. In Philippians 2, 9 through 11, we've got a lot of scriptures here. Listen, therefore God also has highly exhaust, exalted him. We're talking about Christ. And given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus... Every knee shall bow. Let me read it one more time. The sinner, the atheist, those that have rejected Christ, those that thought the creation by the hand of God was a joke, those that had chosen their own heroes, their own gods, every one of those shall bow down and confess that God is the creator, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that there is an eternal home, that this life is just temporary. If we could get that in our head, it's just temporary. We had one of Brenda's friends one time said, I tell you what, if my house ever would burn down, I think I would just die. Really? There's houses that burn down every day. And if no one's in them, no one's dead. Oh, come on, help me. We can build another house. We can buy another car that we wrecked. But we ourselves cannot create another earth. Only God can. Only God can do that. Listen very carefully. Here's what 1 John 5, 17. All unrighteousness is sin. All. But praise God. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what the Bible says. Listen. Even though we have been diagnosed with the ailment sin, and the prognosis is unfavorable. <laughs> God says there's hope. We have a cure. And though for man and himself, it is impossible to cure sin. If we hope in God and pray to God, he can do the impossible. God can save us. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. Here's what the Bible says. Now, this is the confidence that we have in God. That if we ask anything according to his will, that he will hear us. 
And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we ask of him. It is God's desire that everyone be saved. That not one person be lost. Not one. We know that it is God's will. Will that will save. It is his will that we will come to him and say, Oh God, have mercy on me because God loves me. John 3, we're going to read verses there in 15 and 16 here. But whosoever believes in Jesus should not perish. You don't have to perish if you believe in Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, the poor, the rich, the naked, Whoever believes in him, the prostitute, the drug addict, the convict, should not perish but have everlasting life because of God's great love because he wants to heal that terminal disease, sin. Ezekiel 16, 11 through 12, Robbie. Seek ye the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works. Our God promises. He pleads. If we would just believe in Him, lean on Him, pray to Him, trust in Him, rely on Him, and put our faith in Him instead of these idols, these false gods, and these temporary heroes. Now listen to what he says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. This is one of my favorite. This is what God promises. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, <laughs> which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, here's what he says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. What do you mean heal their land? I will hear, heal their physical, their spiritual their emotional and their mental issues. I will heal all of those. And I will wash them clean of that disease called sin. That's what God just said right there. Listen, humble yourselves. What does that mean? God's desire is that we humble ourselves, turn away from our sins and our selfish desires, turn and live forever. God pleads, Brenda. He asks that we repent. And not only put the things of this world on the shelf, but to run away from them. Don't shelve the things of the world. Think, I might need them later. <laughs> Get rid of them. Throw them in the trash. Burn them. Run away as fast as you can. Here's what 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, 22, and 23 says. Hold fast to that which is good. Everybody with me? Abstain and stay away from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's what I put right here. There is an antidote. Those that are viewing in, I'm going to give you some hope now. There is an antidote for the diagnosis of sin. There is a cure. A cure that will make you completely whole. An antidote that will save your life. And the antidote is derived from the blood of the only hero, the Son of God. And everybody said, Amen. Now that you have been cured, those that are viewing in, fall on your knees today and say, Oh God, I have been washed in the blood of Christ. The antidote. Am I a child? Yes, you are. When you believe in Jesus, now that you've accepted Him, as your personal Savior, ask for forgiveness of sins, ask to be washed in the blood, ask to be filled with the Spirit, find yourself a church, a church that teaches what the Bible says. And everybody said, Amen. Now that you have been cured by the blood, the prognosis, those that have accepted Christ today, the prognosis for your future, it's good. No, it's awesome. You now have eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's just not 
that complicated. <laughs> the plan of salvation is so simple. God sent Jesus to die for me. That His blood would wash me clean. That I would be wrapped in His righteousness. And that when He comes at the second coming, I'll be in the kingdom. Now, is that complicated? But, once we accept Christ, let me reiterate on this. Once you accept Christ, you have to move forward for the rest of your life for Jesus Christ. Everybody say, you need to be a warrior for Christ. You can be courageous through Christ. You know, as we close today, I'm going to make this clear. As I was growing up as a little child, my dad, he was my hero. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. It's okay to have a hero down here. Someone that has lived a life of a courageous life. Someone that has given their life for others. Everybody with me so far? Don't think it's not okay. It's okay. My last hero I had here on this planet was my mom. Come on. That last year of her life, she was courageous. Her mind and heart was dead set. I'm going to heaven. And my husband... <laughs> And my children and whoever's not going to stop me. I'm going. And she was never uttered a word of complaint. She never griped. She never carried on. She quietly kept walking toward Jesus Christ. She couldn't walk physically, but she could run spiritually. And she kept walking until she took her last breath. My mom's my hero. I can have mom for hero, can I? God is my hero that will save my soul. My mom was an encouragement. She said no matter. She exemplified courage. What she was saying without saying a word. No matter what happens to you, folks, it's worth it. No matter what trials come, physical health, bad, good, sad, whatever may come. It's worth it that you continually move forward for Jesus. Because the next thing my mom is going to hear is the trumpet's going to sound the voice of Christ. He's going to say, Wanda, wake up. We're going home. And she's going to have a brand new body. And everyone that's viewing in today, if you've accepted Christ, even if you die before he comes, he promises you that even though you're in the grave, that when he speaks, every one of his children will hear his voice. And they'll all come up out of that ground and we will live eternally in perfect health with God forever and ever and ever. Come on, somebody, give me a name. And oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message today. Oh, God, we realize there are heroes in the world today. We've got police officers, Army, Navy, Marines, all those men giving their lives for us. But God, when it comes right down to that eternal life, releasing that guilt, taking the burdens off of our shoulders, the regrets of the past can only be healed by the love and the grace of Jesus Christ, the hero. So, oh God, my Savior is a hero. He's a redeemer. He's a son of God. He's my mediator. He's my best friend. So, oh God, we thank you for the service today. We felt your presence here today, Father. And we pray, God, that someone that's here today or viewing in our program, that they will fall on their knees and say, oh God, forgive me. I want to be in the kingdom when you come. And God hears. And God will grant your wish. In your